Rock the Yahweh. Rock the Yahweh Shai. Call Halayla Yahweh. The Hashem. Yahweh Shai. The Hashem. Rakat Kadash. All praises be to the Most High. Yahweh. In the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior. Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, and pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson entitled, All Things Are Weighed in the Balance. <clears throat> so the earth is getting ready to go through a culling process. Somebody please put that definition on the comment board. Culling. C-U-L-L-I-N-G. So a farmer or a goat herder at a certain point in time, if his flock grows too large, he begins to suffer or the other flock begins to run in peril of obtaining a disease. So the flock or the herd grows too big beyond a span of control of that shepherd. So what happens is he begins to kill off some of the herd, some of the shepherd. I mean, uh, the shepherd begins to kill off, kill off some of the flock because he has a certain span of control. Brother Gabar Donald said a carpenter Call out the wood, exactly. Cut off the fat or trim the fat. Call him. Thank you, brother. Azan Amah. Shalom, Barakatah. Calling is the process of segregating. No, no, uh. Calling, oh, not, not the biology piece. Yeah, that's, that's good, but the calling pertaining to agriculture or your herd, or a farmer. Let me pull it up on here. C-U-L-L-I-N-G. Let's go to this definition. Culling. Culling. Reduction of a wild animal population by selective slaughter. So, when you look at what's happening in the earth today, there are set plans to cull a herd. The current earth's population is 7.9 billion people. So the left hand is a left hand side of the most high, which are the global elites. <laughs> so they are using medical practices to cull a herd, okay? So a farmer, when his herd gets too big, he begins to purposely slaughter the flock because he's fearful that it's going to outgrow his span of control. All about control. So the flock is purposely led to the slaughter. Somebody please post culling, please. Let's listen to it again. Culling. Culling. So these flock are selected based on a process of elimination. He takes the weakest or what they have deemed worthless eaters. So there is a bulk of the population that the global elites have assessed to be worthless eaters. Here we go. Culling a reduction of a wild animal population by selective slaughter. 
See that? Let's go to second address. So the Bible says, somebody post Proverbs 16 and 4. This is going to sound cruel. However, everything is done by design. Let's go to second address. Eight. Second Ezra chapter 8. And we're going to go to verse 50. Second Ezra 8. Shalom, GMS, Amoth, your eyes from Yahweh. <coughs> Second Ezra chapter 8. Let's go to verse 50. We're going to start at the top. The book of Second Ezra chapter 8, verse 1. And he answered me saying, the Most High have made this world for many, but the world to come for few. So the Most High is ex exercising authority on the sinister side. What does sinister or sinistre mean? Left hand, sinister, wicked. Watch this, see? Proverbs 16 and 4. Brother GMS Gabar Dama, Brother Andre serving in Habashai, Proverbs 16 and 4. The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. So the wicked are being sifted out for judgment. So what the Most High is doing is moving the left hand or sinister side to execute judgment on the earth. And it seems cruel, but without the bad, how can we appreciate the ugly? If we don't struggle, how do we appreciate the reward? If we don't go through persecution, what good is joy occupying the peace and harmony on the earth? Without the earth being broken down, how do we appreciate walking into green pasture, immortality, peace, and joy on the earth? So these are the birth pains to deliver the Lord's chosen people. The earth has to go through birth pains. Somebody post that, 2 Nebuchadnezzar 16, somewhere around verse 33. See, somebody posts that in Amos 9, I will sift. Brother Andre serving you how to shine. Amos 9 and 8. Behold, the eyes of the Lord are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob. Beautiful. <coughs> right? It's right here. Saving. So you save the part of the herd that is the first of the flock, you see, that are preserved to serve you. These are your fatlings, the best of your flock. See, verse 9. Well, lo, I will command and I will sift the house of Israel from among all nations like as corn is sifted in a sieve, yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. So this is a sifting process. The Most High is going to preserve those that believe on him, those that trust on him, not those that are drinking blood, raping kids, and committing wickedness on the earth. They are being used as a left-hand tool I'm going to post that in uh, Isaiah 10 and 15. So the Lord has made all things for himself, even the wicked, for the day of evil. So these are merely tools that the Most High is using to execute judgment on the earth. But they are, they are appointed a certain time that they cannot pass. Somebody post that in Job 13, I think it's 4. So when the earth begins to transition through its birth pains, it's going to usher in the birth of the righteous, Jacob. So the wicked 
will not go beyond their appointed time on this earth. They have an appointed time. They are merely tools. Let's prove that. Brother Andre serving in our shire. Isaiah 10, verse 15. See, watch this. Shall the axe boast itself against him that heweth therewith? Or shall the saw magnify itself against him that shaketh it as if the rod should shake itself against them that lifteth it up? Or as if the staff should lift up itself as if it were no wood? So this is a staff or a rod of correction. We don't appreciate the reward without having suffered for it. What good is an excellence award when we have not demonstrated due diligence and excellence? What good is success if we have not earned it? See, so the wicked is not going to exceed their point in time. Brother Andre serving in Havashai, Job 14, verse 5. Watch this. <clears throat> Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. So the earth is going to enter into tranquility, peace, joy, immortality. But it must go through birth pains. See, let's go to Revelations 9. Revelations 9. See, Revelations 9, verse 15. And the four angels were loose, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. So the wicked are going to be judged. That's the hammer, the saw, and the staff that's being used to usher in Armageddon, the third world war. See that? Let's read this again. Brother Andre serving you how to shot. Somebody go ahead and post Revelations 9 and 15. Just to help edify the body, please. Brother Andre serving in Havashah. Job 14, verse 5. Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. So a woman goes through months of pain, tribulation. Mourning, sorrow, looking forward to the delivery. Why you think he says, I will deliver thee? That's the birth of the nation of Jacob. The Bible says in 2 Andrews 6, verse 9, Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of it that follow. See, that's the delivery after the birth pains of tribulation, affliction, trial, persecution, judgment. Thank you, Sean Richardson. See, so everything is set in its prescribed place and time and sequence. The Most High is about order and balance. Nothing exceeds its place in time. Let's go back to 2nd Edges. 2nd Edges chapter 8, verse 1. See, watch this. <clears throat> and he answered me, saying, The Most High have made this world for many, but the world to come for few. I will tell thee a similitude, Edges, as when thou askest the earth, it shall say unto thee, that it giveth much mold, whereof earthen vessels are made, but little dust that gold cometh of, even so is the course of this present world. So you must have a good example and a bad example. 
to sift or preserve the few. A treasure is valuable because it is not many of it. It's few. So it makes its small number that's been tried and tested through the fiery trial of adversity valuable. Whenever you get a diamond, it looks like dog doo-doo. If you ever looked at diamond in its original state, it's a clump of dirt all over it. But it goes through the pressure and the heat and the fiery trial of adversity and being pressed and shaped and banged by the tools of the Lord. You see, and it's shaped into a shiny, glistering, precious stone. It's worthless in its raw state. You'll throw it away. You'll say, don't touch that. That's horse dung. That's horse doo doo. So the most high, let's read it again. Second address eight, verse two. <clears throat> I will tell thee a similar to as this, as when thou askest the earth, it shall say unto thee that it giveth much more, whereof earthen vessels are made. But little dust that gold cometh of, even so is the course of this present world. So you'll be able to make a distinction of the Lord's chosen elect that believe in his word, that trust in his name, that's going to suffer for righteousness sake, that not our Lord and Savior get whipped, beat, a crown of thorns or dug into his head. Pull up an image of Emmett Till. That's how our Lord and Savior left this earth. Look up an image of Emmett Till. Say his face was marred. You couldn't recognize our Lord and Savior. And he was hung on a tree because he knew that he had to suffer to be refined so he can occupy the throne of righteousness. Let's go down. Let's go down to verse, <coughs> verse 51. Let's go to verse 49. And that thou hast humbled thyself as it becometh thee, and hast not judged thyself worthy to be much glorified among the righteous. Walking in meekness and humility, enduring suffering and persecution for the kingdom's sake. Exactly, Brother Azan Amath. 2 Timothy 2, verse 10. Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Hamashiach Yehoshai with eternal glory. That's the reward. Immortality and the kingdom of heaven. Please post 2 Timothy 2, verse 2, please. 2 Timothy 2, verse 2. Or the Andre serving Yehoshai. Acts 14 and 22. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. Now, how do you prove your faith without adversity, without tribulation, without being pressured to commit spiritual fornication, to bow down to the mark of the beast, which looks like a miniature penis, that's spiritual adultery being joined unto the beast system pursuant to Revelations 13. How do you prove your faithful, your fidelity, if you're not tested, if you're not tried? How do you measure your faith? So the most high is turning up the heat to refine his precious pearls, his fine gold. His elect. This is beautiful. I love it. 
For we must, through great tribulation, enter into the kingdom of heaven. See, Brother Gabar Adama, Revelation 7, verse 14. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. See? So when you look at what our Lord and Savior suffered, we must and likewise suffer persecution, being afflicted, compact, compressed, and compacted. When you look at a lump of mud where gold resides, the impurities must be burned out and it must be heated up to an extremely high temperature. You see, where the pressure is high, the pain and suffering is high, but the gift of the reward of the kingdom is everlasting. So it's little compared to the reward at the end. <coughs> Somebody post that, please. Nothing compares to the reward. So this suffering is but a little time. Somebody post 2 Corinthians 4 and 17, please. 2 Corinthians 4 and 17. And there's another one in Romans chapter 8. That these light affliction compared to the eternal reward that's been promised to his elect. Brother Gabar Adama, 2 Timothy 2, verse 12. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. That's beautiful. So we have to go through the trial of faith. How do you do that? With a test, with adversity, with being tempted. So this is a culling process. The Most High is going to trim the herd, trim the fat. And if you ever watch a shepherd, is not our Lord and Savior called our shepherd? If you ever watch him cull the herd, you're looking at it like it's evil. But it's necessary. How do you define the faithful from the unfaithful? How do you define those that believe versus the unbelievers? How do you define those that have been tried and tested? The elect. How do you define his chosen people? Through a coming process. See? Somebody post Zechariah 13, verse 8 and 9. Are you going to tell the shepherd or the farmer that he's going off? He doesn't know what he's doing? <laughs> Absolutely not. Somebody post Zechariah 13, verse 8 and 9, please. Beautiful. Brother Gabar Adama, Revelations 14, verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of the Most High and the faith of Yahweh. See? So our faith must be tried and tested. Brother Andre serving Yahweh. Let's go here first. Brother Azan Amaf. Proverbs 25, verse 4. Take away the dross from the silver, and there shall come forth a vessel for the finer. So silver and gold must go through a refining process to burn out the impurities. That's sin. Brother Andre Servin, Yahushai, Zechariah 13, Verse 8. So here is the calling process. Matter of fact, let's read. <coughs> okay, yeah. Verse 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, 
two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein, and I will bring the third part through the fire, and will refine them as silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say, it is my people, and they shall say, the Lord is my God. See, so this is a refiner's process. Gold, silver, diamonds is pressed in the heat of fiery trial, adversity, tribulation, and the stones of the wicked are going to be carried away in judgment. So the Bible says that a man's going is of the Lord. How then can a man know his own way? So they're being used as tools to usher in judgment, leading into Armageddon, the third world war. Somebody post Jeremiah 10 and 23 and Proverbs 16 Verse 1 and Proverbs 16 and 9, please. Brother Gabar Adama. Matthew 13, verse 40. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of the world. Beautiful. So the culling process ends in the wicked being destroyed. And that third part of men. It's talking about Esau, Edom. How do we know that? Read Romans 9, verse 22 and 23. That they were created so that the Most High can show his power through his wrath. That's in Romans 9, verse 22 and 23. A vessel of wrath fitted to destruction. See that? I know it sounds cruel, but this is by design. A culling process. Brother Andre serving in Havashai, Proverbs 16 and 1. The preparations of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. So he orchestrates our path on the left-hand side and the path of the righteous. Those that hear his voice, this word, Proverbs 16 and 9, a man's heart deviseth his way but the Lord direct his steps. So everything is set in perfect balance. Good is set against evil. Evil is set against the good. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 14, verse 17. For our, let's go to verse 16. 2 Corinthians 4, Verse 16, for which cause we faint not, but through our outward, for which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. A refiner's process. Verse 17, watch this. For our light affliction is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. An eternal weight of glory. So this is a light affliction compared to eternal glory. Let's read that again. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 17. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding an eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are e temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So everything is set in perfect balance. The good or the righteous is being refined by the adversity afflicted by the wicked. And the wicked are being rebuked and reproved by the works of the righteous. 
<clears throat> Remember? Proverbs 16 and 1. The Most High divides our tongue in Proverbs 16 and 1. So this is a perfect balance. If you ever spoken with a woman that practice witchcraft, she'll tell you that there's a balance to witchcraft. They're in line with harmony, but they're using abominations because they're also doing things that hurt people. But then they'll do something that they say they claim to be good, so they'll justify witchcraft. But it's all bad. So they're trying to work in harmony with nature in witchcraft. But really what they're doing leads to maliciousness, what they're doing to different men and women. So they're trying to justify themselves. Let's go to 2 Ezra 4. But they understand universal balance, but on a left-hand side. So they're still going up. Let's go to 2 Ezra 4. Let's start reading at verse 4. We're going to talk about balance. 2 Ezra 4, verse 4. <clears throat> Let's go to verse 3. Then said I, yea, my Lord, and he answered me and said, I am sent to show thee three ways and to set forth three similitudes before thee, whereof if thou canst declare me one, I will show thee also the way that thou desirest to see, and I shall show thee from whence the wicked heart cometh. I will show thee from whence the wicked heart cometh. Verse 5, and I said, Tell on, my Lord. Then said he unto me, Go thy way, weigh me, the weight of the fire, measure me, the blast of the wind, or call me again, the day that is past. Watch this. Then answered I and said, What man is able to do that, that thou shouldest ask such things of me? And he said unto me, If I should ask thee how great dwellings are in the midst of the sea, or how many springs are in the beginning of the deep, or how many springs are above the firmament, or which are the outgoings of paradise. Peradventure, thou wouldst say unto me, I never went down into the deep, nor as yet into hell, neither did I ever climb up into heaven. So whenever you're preparing precious metals, it's going through a what? A heating process and a cooling process. Cooling down, first it's heated to extreme temperatures. There's also a breaking up, where you gotta chisel and break away the infirmities, the impurities, the dirt, the mud, the mold, the earthen vessels are chipped away. So there is a process. Let's keep going. Verse nine. So we are being shaped and refined, developed, and cultivated to meet or be fit for the master's use. He is the master. Verse 9, <clears throat> Nevertheless, now have I asked thee, but only of the fire and wind, and of the day whereof thou hast passed, and of things from which thou canst not be separated, and yet canst thou give me no answer of them. So we must know the good, the bad, the evil. We cannot appreciate the good without going through the test from the wicked, the evil. We don't understand righteousness without having been under an unrighteous government, unrighteous leaders. Wicked leaders. How do we appreciate the return of the great shepherd and all righteous 
king. His other name or other incarnation is Melchizedek. What is that? Malak Tazadah, which means what? Somebody put the answer on the comment board, please. What is Malak Tazadah or Melchizedek? Second Exodus 4, verse 8. Heard it, Vince. Let's go back to verse, let's go to verse 10. He said, Moreover, unto me, thy own things and such as are grown up with thee, canst thou not know? Malak Tazadak means king of righteousness, which also means the king of peace. But the primary meaning is the king of righteousness. And the secondary meaning is king of peace or shalom, shalom. You see, like the king of Salem or the king of shalom. Let's keep going. Second Exodus 4, verse 10. He said, moreover unto me, thine own things and such as are grown up with thee, canst thou not know? Somebody put a post. I have said ye are gods. So that lowercase g or gods are lords of the earth. Did, did not Sarah call Abraham Lord? So he is developing malachs, which means kings. Malachim. Malachim, the plural. He's developing kings. Somebody post that. Uh, in Psalms 82, I have said ye are gods. So he's developing future leaders to know the way of the wicked, to know the way of the evil, to know the good, to know the righteous, to know the unrighteous, to know what filth and abomination looks like. See, Brother Gabar Donna and Brother Andre serving in Havashai. Psalms 82, verse 6, I have said, ye are God's and all of you are the children of the Most High. So when you look up that word Israel, it goes back to uh, Yasharab. He is a prince of the power. Yashara, Yashara Allah, Yashara Allah. He is a prince of the power. So you don't become a ruler without understand or no, without understanding how to follow. How do you lead if you have not followed? How do you know how to rule if you have not been ruled over? So these gods are lords. Lowercase l. Go to verse 11. See, let's keep going. Second Exodus 4, verse 11. Let's read this first. Brother Gabar Dama, <coughs> Isaiah 60, verse 14. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee, and all they that despise thee shall bow themselves. All the nations of the earth are going to serve Israel under Yahweh our Lord and Savior. That's in Isaiah chapter 60, Isaiah chapter 61, Zechariah chapter 14. Somebody posts, those that don't serve shall, shall perish. I think it's Isaiah chapter 60, verse 10. Let's keep going. Second Exodus 4, verse 11. How should thy vessel then be able to comprehend the weight of the highest and the world being now outwardly corrupted to understand the corruption that is evident in thy sight. So we must have 360 degree periphery to be a Lord, to be a ruler. See, Brother Andre serving in Havashah, Isaiah 60, verse 12. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. See that? So 
So in order to be a righteous, effective ruler, we must have or God on the earth, which translate to judge, authority, ruler. We must have 360 degree periphery, crowns of glory, crowns of righteousness, a vision. Somebody post Proverbs 29, verse 18. Brother Basic Wisdom, Luke 19, verse 27. Shalom, Barak the Thaw, beloved brother. Luke 19 and 27. But those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. So the one whom you ignorantly call Jesus said, those that will not serve me shall perish. That's the true Savior. But it's going to be set up under a new holy Righteous government. No more brokebacks, molesters, pedophiles, murderers, creeps are going to be roaming the earth freely. It's not going to happen. So this new holy kingdom is going to be established under a perfect rulership, under a vision according to the word of God. Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Brother Andre serving Yahushai. Proverbs 29, verse 18. See? Where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. So the world is going to be governed by this Bible under our Lord and Savior, Yahweh And the Israelites are promised eternal life. Somebody put what they think the Rothschild's salary is. How much are the Rothschilds worth? Somebody take a stab at it. So we're going to see the biggest scene of trading places never known to mankind. What is the value of the Rothschilds? You never see them on the news. You're looking at Bill Gates, Elon Musk. They're worth about $100 billion each. They get a finger poked in their chest by the Rothschilds. That's an old estimate. Yeah, that, that's the number that I was guessing. 500 trillion. 700 trillion. So the Israelites, yes, thank you, awaken to the truth. The Israelites are going to switch places with the Rothschilds to help put this into perspective. See that? So we have to have a vision. <clears throat> so our wealth is going to be off the charts. We're going to have servants, the nations. So the promises are to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If King Solomon, which is Shiloh, which is Melchizedek, if he was on the earth today as Yehoshaphat, our Lord and Savior, he would exceed $700 trillion. See that? We will never have to work Another day in our life. Ever. <coughs> yup. Brothers, GMS Spiritual Art. Shalom, Malak, Baratata. Sirach 10, verse 4. The power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord, and in due time he will set over it one that is profitable. The sons of Jacob. Gods of the earth, Yasharala, he is a prince of the power. Let's read that again. Surah 10, verse 4. The power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord, and in due time he will set over it one that is profitable. Beautiful. Brother, GMS Spiritual Art, Surah 10, verse 8. Who are considered the pearls of the gold and silver of the earth. The Israelites are. So when he says, I will set up over it one that is profitable, it starts with our Lord and Savior. But under him is his precious fine jewels and pearls, his elect. Brother GMS Spiritual Art, Surah 10, verse 8. Because of unrighteousness,
unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches gotten by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people unto another. This is beautiful. We'll never have to work another day in our life. We'll never be called three-fifths of a man anymore. We'll never be told we're worthless anymore. We'll never be told we're good for nothing anymore. We'll never be told we have been cast away anymore. Somebody post that in Romans 11. Have God cast away his people? God forbid. Somebody post Psalms 94, verse 14. Brother Sean Richardson, Proverbs 19 and 9. Wealth maketh many friends, but the poor is separated from his neighbor. So the Israelites are called the poor, the downtrodden. We're being told we've been cast away. Brother Andre Serbini Havashai, James 5 and 2. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. So the garments of the wicked are the global elite. They have gotten everything by illegal wars, theft, robbery, and deceit. Somebody posts they are clothed with violence. I think it's Psalm 73, either 6 or 7. They are clothed with violence. That's Psalm 73, verse 6 or verse 7. Let's go back up to this. Brother Andre serving in Havashai, James 5, verse 1. Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. So your gold and silver is cankered and the rust of them shall be a witness against you and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. So they have reaped the wealth of free labor, enslaving the children of Israel, the poor man, the plow man. That's why Amos 9 says the plow man shall overtake the reaper. The reapers are the international bankers the global elites, the Edomites. See, James 5 and 4. Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you, kept back by fraud, crieth, and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord, Sabaoth. So our prayers and our cries are reaching up unto the most high. Just like ancient Egypt, he's going to hear the prayers of his elect. So they are clothed. Let's read it. Brother Karab Yasharala, Psalm 73, verse 6. Therefore, pride compasses them about as a chain. Violence covered them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than a heart could wish. So they have lived off free labor, colonization, off the blood, sweat, and tears of the downtrodden, the oppressed, the Lord's chosen elect. That's why we're seeing a huge swarm of activity. They are ushering in a culling process. So the Most High is controlling the actions of man. For the basic wisdom. Psalms 145, verse 13. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and thy dominion endure throughout all generations. This is the kingdom to come, an eternal, everlasting kingdom of righteousness, eternal wealth, immortality, the gift of peace and joy, the gift of of being healed, no more pain, no more sorrow, no more sickness, no more death. The Most High is going to remember the promises that he made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
and he's going to restore the kingdom back to Israel, pursuant to Acts chapter 1, verse 6. Go back to 2nd Exodus chapter 4. So we must go through a circle of events to obtain a crown of glory. 360 degrees of vision, understanding, how to rule, how to judge righteously, how to govern. <clears throat> See? 2nd Exodus chapter 4, verse 11. How should thy vessel then be able to comprehend the weight of the highest and the world, being now outwardly corrupted to understand the corruption that is evident in thy sight? Then said I unto him, It were better that we were not at all, than that we should live still in wickedness, and to suffer and to know wherefore. Verse 12, then said I unto him, it were better that we were not at all than that we should live still in wickedness and to suffer and not to know wherefore. So Ezra is saying, this is madness. It's better that we not even be born. Why do we have to go and be dragged through the mud? How do you appreciate robes that are white as snow? If you have not been muddy, if you have not gotten your boots dirty, how do you appreciate a white collar job, a robe that's been cleansed and made white? How do you appreciate eternal life if you have not suffered pain, sorrow, sickness, and death? So Ezra is not realizing the full purpose, design, and master plan. Most high goddess. He's like, I got you. I got you. I'll keep going. Second Exodus 4, verse 13. <clears throat> Second Exodus 4, verse 13. He answered me and said, I went into a forest, into a plain, and the trees took counsel and said, Come. Let us go and make war against the sea, that it may depart away before us, and that we may make us more woods. The floods of the sea also, in like manner, took counsel and said, Come, let us go up and subdue the woods of the plain, that there also we may make us another country. Somebody post Jeremiah 5, and somewhere around verse 22, though the waves roar and toss themselves. Second Exodus 4, <clears throat> verse 15. Second Exodus 4, verse 15. The floods of the sea also, in like manner, took counsel and said, Come, let us go up and subdue the woods of the plain, that there also we may make us another country. The thought of the wood was in vain, for the fire came and consumed it. The thought of the floods of the sea came likewise to naught, for the sand stood up and stopped them. See? <clears throat> so everything is set in harmony, balance. Brother GMS, spiritual art, let's prove that. Jeremiah 5, verse 22. Fear ye not me, saith the Lord. Will ye not tremble at my presence, which have placed the sand for the bound of the sea by a perpetual decree that it cannot pass? And though the waves thereof toss themselves, yet can they not prevail? Though they roar, yet can they not pass over it? So we cannot overcome the will of the Most High. We must suffer. We must see pain and sickness. We must see mourning, massive death and sorrow. We must be tested. We must see 
the nations raging, uproars of the people. That's a part of why do the heathens rage in Psalms chapter 2. So we must test the limits of our faith. The faith or the limits of our faith must be tested. Let's read that again. Brother Karab, Yasharal, Jeremiah 5, verse 22. Fear ye not me, saith the Lord. Will ye not tremble at my presence, which have placed the sand for the bound of the sea by a perpetual decree that it cannot pass it? And though the waves thereof toss themselves, yet can they not prevail? Though they roar, yet can they not pass over it? So these nations are raging and roaring. We're going to see uproars of the people. We're going to see birth pains before the birth of the nation of Jacob. We're going to see our faith undergo a trial of tribulation, adversity. So we must have the limits of our faith tested. Whenever you look at a tool, it has a fire test code on it. The limits where if it's pushed to in extreme heat, it'll melt. So it has little codes on it. So it has to be tested to the limits to be shaped in order to reach its full potential glory in the crowns or the promises of the kingdom. <clears throat> Let's go back. Let's close out here. Let's go back to 2 Ezra chapter 8. Verse 1. 2nd Exodus 8, verse 1. And he answered me, saying, The Most High have made this world for many, but a world to come for few. I will tell thee a similitude, Ezra, as when thou askest the earth, it shall say unto thee, that it giveth much more, whereof earthen vessels are made, but little dust that gold cometh of, even so is the course of this present world. So he is bringing forth his gold. Let's go to 2nd Exodus 8. I'm going to go down to verse 21. 2nd Exodus 8. Let's go to verse 20. O Lord, thou that dwellest in everlastingness, which beholdest from above things, in the air and in the heaven, whose throne is inestimable, whose glory may not be comprehended, before whom the host of angels stand with trembling, whose service is conversing in wind and fire, whose word is true and sayings constant, whose commandment is strong and ordinance fearful. So these are set decrees, ordinances. So his elect is being perfected. How do we get made perfect? Somebody post that in Colossians 1, somewhere around verse 27. How do we get made perfect? Let's get ready to close out. We'll visit the comment board. Hopeful elect of Yahweh. 2nd Ezra 16, verse 69. And they that consent unto them shall be had in derision and in reproach and trodden underfoot. For there, for there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. Those are the birth pains. <coughs> Brother GMS Spiritual Art. Wisdom of Solomon 3, verse 5. And having been a little chastised, they shall be greatly rewarded for the Most High proved them and found them worthy for himself. Beautiful. That's the masterpiece. Vessels of mercy that were created for glory. That's in 2 
That's in Romans chapter 9. Brother Andre serving in Hawashai, 2nd chapter 9, verse 15. I have said before and now do speak and will speak it also hereafter that there be many more of them which perish, which perish than of them which shall be saved. So these mandates that they're pushing, somebody posted in uh, 2nd Exodus 5, the first three verses, 2nd Exodus 5 is a part of that calling process. Okay, I've already lost five family members. Five already. So these trials and tests or culling has already started in the context of these global mandates. GMS Spiritual Art 144, Wisdom of Solomon 3, verse 5. And having been a little chastised, they shall be greatly rewarded. And having been a little chastised, excuse me, they shall be greatly rewarded for God proved them and found them worthy for himself. Brother Andre Servant, Yahushai, 2nd Exodus 9, verse 15. I have said before and now do speak and will speak it also hereafter that there be many more of them which perish, then of them which shall be saved. Beautiful. So what's being preserved is the flock of the Lord that have been perfected through faith in Yahushai. Brother Andre serving in Habashai, 2nd Exodus 5 and 3. And the land that thou, 2nd Exodus 5, let's go up to verse 1. Nevertheless, as cunning, 2nd <coughs> Exodus 5 and 1. Nevertheless, as cunning, the tokens, behold, the days shall come, that they which dwell upon the earth shall be taken in a great number, and the way of truth shall be hidden, and the land shall be barren of faith, but iniquity, but iniquity, the screen jump, second Exodus 5, verse 2, but iniquity shall be increased above that which now thou seest, or that thou hast heard long ago. So many shall be taken in great number. Did we not go into the definition of, of culling? So it all goes back that this world was made for many, but the world to come for few. So he's going to preserve a remnant, elect, and salvage nations to serve Israel. Read that again. 2nd Exodus 5, verse 1. Nevertheless, as coming the tokens, behold, the day shall come that they which dwell upon the earth shall be taken in a great number and the way of truth shall be hidden and the land shall be barren of faith. And we're there now. The earth dwells in gross darkness. The wicked are in rulership. The international bankers or global elite. But iniquity shall be increased above that which now thou seest or that thou hast heard long ago. And the land that thou seest now to have root shall thou see wasted Suddenly, how's the land going to be wasted or made desolate? Weapons of mass destruction. But it starts with what? Pestilence, what we're dealing with now. Civil wars. 
insurrection, sedition, sedition among men, resisting the mandates, the MOTB, the Marcus Aurelius, the Alchi, how do you say it? The Fauci Alchi. Alchi, Fauci, Fauci, Alchi. Same thing. See? So this all leads into a culling process. But the Most High has put it in the minds of his chosen to resist these temptations. So we're going to be tested to the limits of our faith. But he's not going to put more on us than we can handle. He knows what we can handle. He says, fear not, for I will help thee, saith the Lord. So he's going to cut off the excess herd. That's why the Bible says, it shall come to pass in all the land, saith the Lord. Two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. So this is all a culling process that's being moved on the left hand or sinister side to trim the fat of the herd of the earth whose global population is 7.9 billion people. Seven link represents completion. That is a number to the most high of completion. So the harvest is approaching, which is the end of the world. And he's going to reap a harvest and trim the fat and leave a remnant. Elect of Israel, followed by salvage Gentiles that are going to serve in the kingdom to come. So all things are weighed in the balance. And the earth is ripe. A harvest is ripe. This place is ready for judgment. The grapes are fat on the vine. Seven point Nine billion people. And he's using the left hand, sinister or wicked side, to help call the herd. And it's going to escalate to illegal mandates, unrighteous decrees, the MOTB, the Marcus Aurelius, the Fauci Ouchie, the Hokey Pokey. And it's going to culminate in a catastrophic event. Armageddon and the Third World War, which is going to be preceded by civil wars, riots, insurrections. All things are weighed in the balance. All praises to Yahweh, a Hashem, Yahweh Shai, a Hashem, Rakat Kadash, Barak Adam. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are helping to edify the body and feed the lambs of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. Shalom to the beloved ladies of the hopeful elect. Shalom, beloved, of the house of David. Love you. We got next, Lord willing. Barakatana, Kwam Yasharala, and the Bible Bible. Got to keep our heads on a swivel and be circumspect, which means to look round about us. For the days are evil, and the culling process has already begun. So the Most High is bringing forth judgment. And this is the year of turn up, or the year of turning it up. But we must walk circumspectly, which means look about us 360 degrees round about. Kwam Yasharala, and abide about. We got next, Lord willing. Shalom.